Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have Scott Adams here today. He is part of our podcast team. He has his own podcast on The Advisor and he has a consultant firm and he is amazing. Today we're going to talk about navigating the growth phase from startup to scale up. And he's going to go over some of the important factors that you need to know when you're a startup business and you're looking to grow your business and you're looking to excel to the next level. There are some things that you really need to take in into hand. And today he's going to go over those things with you. So Scott, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show. And I'm really excited to hear about this because so many people want to grow their business. And a lot of times they're missing key components and they just, or they just don't know where to begin. So, you know, tell us a little about, you know, starting up a business and then learn how to scale and grow your business. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. It's always great to talk with you, Stacey. It's like the fastest time of the entire day. It's amazing how fast the time goes by. So um, I do appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, exciting times, right? Taking your startup and scaling it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's one of those things, right? It's uh, you've had an idea for a long time, you've worked through it. It's finally come to fruition to a little bit. And then now you get the rush, right? You got new customers, you're expanding your teams. There's like a buzz of opportunity going on, right? And it's just a very exciting time for startups, but it's also a very vulnerable time. And, you know, you do have to understand that with all that, there does come ang fear of anxiety, right? A little bit of a sense of losing control because suddenly things are chaotic with so many new opportunities. And this and other things are very, really challenges uh, that come with scaling and growing your company from that startup phase. So it is, yeah, it's a very vulnerable phase, but it's also a very exciting phase. Yes, it definitely is. Now, you know, a lot of times when people have a startup business and they want it there, they're looking to get get grounded. They're trying, trying to build their platform, you know, and they're trying to figure out what the next step is. You know, there's so many different things they need to take in hand. Like, what are some of the things they need to focus on first when you have a startup business? What are the most important aspects that you need to focus on when you first get started? Yeah, I think when you first get started, one of the most important parts of that is just one, making sure you're surrounding yourself with the right individuals, whether that's mentors, whether it's experts in different domains that you aren't skilled at. The building and establishing of your team is one of the most vital components for a startup. You know, the other thing too, in that foundation stage is just making sure that you have kind of the lay of the land, right? Making sure you're documenting what you're doing, your process, and just really making sure that those initial steps and building blocks are in place to do. Because again, once you start to grow and hit the button on the accelerator there, it's a whole different ballgame. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Now, once you start to get grounded and you start to, you know, focus on the, the things you have to do, you know, are there certain, certain factors that you really should really focus on first or, um, or are they, or maybe break things up in, and, and kind of uh, create some type of plan that will help you, you know, so you can get to that stage where you can start to grow and, and, you know, start to focus on scaling and, and pricing and so forth like that. Yeah, no, great question. Um, you know, there's a few things that you always need to consider uh, in this step of things, right? The first, there's three domains that I like to focus on with companies that I work with when we're just talking about scaling out operations. The first within there is going to be, you really have to have a focus on maintaining quality and consistency, right? It's very easy to make one or two things, but it becomes exponentially harder when you're making a hundred of those or 200 of those or thousands. So there's that scaling paradox that comes into mind that uh, like we just talked about when the volume increases and the scale increases, it becomes really hard to maintain that consistency. So that's one of the things that you need to focus on is making sure that the quality is still there. If you're in the service industry and scaling, that same applies, right? The quality of those interactions need to hold true and consistent. Um, you also, you need to build a scalable system as part of your solution. So this is when you really have to focus on uh, documenting your process and building processes that work for one to a hundred and mm -hmm. getting away from that early startup stage where I call it the heroics, right? You're one person doing many different things and uh, that becomes harder as you grow. So you need to get 
knock some of those off your plate and delegate. And that's where the team comes important. A um, couple other areas that we focus on is managing that cash flow and resources. Um, there's a huge, you know, growth trap where founders kind of lose a sense of their finances and they're just pushing so hard forward to get revenue and get customers that they, that falls out of sight. It suddenly becomes the rear view mirror item. And next thing you know, it's gone and you get lots of, you know, money and debt here because you're focusing on that. And, you know, I think we talked a little bit in our, our last discussion too, you know, the media has played into this, right? These large companies, you know, you think of the companies like Airbnb and Lyft and uh, those those projects, right? They go with millions of dollars in debt as they pursue more customers with the yeah. hope of building it on the back end. But again, that's not possible for a small business owner or somebody new, uh, especially a startup, right? You may not have capital. You may be trying to bootstrap this as you go, which is always the best option. Um, but that comes into play. Um, and part of that cash flow and managing those resources is also having that financial foresight, right? You need a model that's going to forecast what kind of money you can see coming in um, mm -hmm. because that can help you keep ahead. It can help you plan to figure out, hey, I'm going to have increasing expenses in these areas, but what does my forecast look like so I can make sure I can balance those things together? Um, yes. And the last component, and I know there, there's a lot of different things to talk about. We're trying to cover them quickly and cover three here, but it's just... In the startup world too, you have to understand just like every other product, there's a changing market conditions and customer demands. And especially in today's age, that disruption is extremely volatile and out there, right? Things can change in, in an instant. You know, we see it with technology, we see it with viral videos that change your feelings on things rather quickly. Um, yeah. So you need to continue that agile mindset as a startup when you're trying to grow and make sure you're uh, reading those demands, and then you can test, learn, apply as you move forward. Now, as you start to grow, and w when you're doing all those things, and you start to see some growth, you know, so many people ask, you know, how do I know when I should scale? Because a lot of people are afraid when they start gaining customers, and they're starting to grow, and they're they're starting to, you know, start to they're starting to do well for themselves. And, you know, they're afraid to scale a lot of people and they're, they, they're because they're afraid they're going to lose their customers because they're, you know, they gave the customers a price. And if they scale their prices, they're afraid they're going to lose their customers or even lose their future customers because maybe maybe it will be too much and they won't want to buy the, the product or the service. Yeah, no, that's always a hard question. And, you know, I've I've worked with established owners that still have that same challenge. Right. But. Again, if you're maintaining the, your consistency and quality of the product, right, everyone knows as time goes on, the price to produce things has increased. So customers are going to expect that price. So you do you have to value your product and your brand, and you do have to price it accordingly and grow. Um, it's always one of those things, too. And when we talked a few moments ago about kind of that heroic mentality of a startup founder, um, you do have to realize too, is that those customer interactions, the busier you are, no matter how hard you try, there's going to be a component of that that falls off. So I, I've seen so many startups that are at a point where they really need extra help to bring new people in to help them with either daily tasks or um, strategic view or business development that they don't because again, they just, they want to own it all or they're scared, like you had just said. But if you're if you have the financial forecast and what you're going to do and you can't maintain the quality yourself, that's when it's time to grow. And I understand it's hard as a startup, right? Because you have limited funds and you don't want to go into debt and hiring someone is a challenge. So, you know, finding the right partner to work that in with you, you know, there's always creative options to figure out how someone's going to be potentially compensated for what they're doing. And, that'll help meet the needs of your growth organization and also make sure your financial needs are in line too. Right. You know, it, 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 it's really, you know, a lot of people go through so many challenges when they're a startup business and a lot of people, you know, they, you know, they get scared, you know, and, and the statistics are against them. They, there's a big failure rate, you know, when you, when you're a startup business, 
you know, and, and what are some suggestions you, you think you could give to people, you know, be, so they don't get, you know, they're not part of that statistic of the failure, you know, how, you know, how, how can you make sure that you're on the success side and that, you, you know, you, you don't, you don't fail because so many businesses, you know, even restaurants itself, they have, I think one of the highest, you know, failure rates, you know, a lot of restaurants don't make it past a year, you know, so, you know, what, could, what are some of the things people can do to actually make sure they succeed and they, and that they're growing on a steady pace where, or even th beginning to thrive so they can, you know, get to that point where they want to be. Yeah, no, that's, you know, it is such a depressing statistic, right? Because, and I see it, I'm a business consultant, right? I try to work with companies to help them grow. And one of the things I find with a lot of startups is, again, they're very passionate and very knowledgeable about what they do. Frankly, a lot of them are geniuses in what they do. But what they're not a, a genius about and what they're not experienced about is, how do I take this idea and make it a business, right? Yes. So you got to, and again, these are very highly intelligent people and you need to get that extra help, right? Someone like myself that can come in and show you the ropes, right? Show you, hey, you're kind of got the blinders on about this area here. Let's look at your things we just talked about, your cash flow, like building your team. Those things are important. So I think startups, one, they struggle with understanding business and how they can take their product to a business. Um, the other part too is again, you just you just consistently, I mean, we do it, we all do it. It's unfortunately the culture these days. We spread ourselves too thin. So having hesitancy in bringing in a business consultant, someone to deal with business development is a challenge. But those are the those are the pitfalls they fall into that start to, you know, put limitations on how they can grow and limitations on turning those things and being in the best opportunity, like much like an athlete is, right? Like you train hard, you work at things and you want to put yourself in the best situation to be successful. And right. that's what I think a lot of companies that fail, they don't do. Yeah. Now, when you, when you talk about co company culture, like, you know, can you explain to the audience what you mean by company culture? Yeah. Um, you know, when you come up, when you come in through a business and you're starting up something, you have your own values, right? Everyone has slightly different values that needs to hold true in your business, right? Because if you can't be authentic in your business, it's going to show your customers are going to notice the people you hire are going to be noticed. So those are things that need to stay consistent. And it's kind of a cultural anchor to what you're doing. And even as you scale, these are things that have to hold true, right? So you think about things about like your value and your core values. And again, there's one thing to just list them on a piece of paper and like, okay, they're there. We wrote them down. We did our due diligence on that, but there's another thing to actually live them. So you have to do that. And then when you're looking at, when you're bringing people on, they need to understand that story. How did this idea get started? You know, why did you come up with this idea? Why are you passionate about it? Because having them understand what you've been through will start to get them to understand what you, how you function and how you run and how you, you see things for the future. So that anchor has to hold true uh, throughout. So when you're hiring, and again, same with corporations these days, right? Everyone with the ATS that looks at your resume with, you know, everyone has all these experiences and they put it into a computer or AI and it spits it out based on experience, but that's not meeting what you really want, right? You want to hire people based on your culture, based on your values. If they can check those boxes, right? And they have a relevant skill set for what you need, you can train them the rest. Right. Every product in itself or service is a little bit different, but there's consistency across those soft skills that are needed. So when you're establishing your company and hiring, these are one of the things that you need to focus on is making sure that those values are in everybody that you bring into the organization. 
I think that's a good point too, because I think a lot of times when people hire people, they're looking at, you know, where, you know, what kind of jobs they had previously, what what do they know, you know, where they graduate, blah, 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 blah. But they don't, you know, when do you have really hear people talk about, you know, what are your values? You know, what what are you looking for? You know, you don't have people really interview and, and bring the core values and the culture into the into the company conversation. And maybe that's why when you hear somebody, you know, bosses and you hear so many people that are in charge you know, you know managers and so forth they're like i can't find good help i can't find the right employees maybe you know that's a conversation that should be brought into interviews is is you know what kind of core values what kind of culture you know are they looking to you know be a part of and and see if if their you know their goals and their their core values match with yours yeah and you know, you, you see this in even organizations. Again, some people hire their friends or family, and some people hire friends of coworkers, right? But the, having those mismatch in the values will start to erode what you've been working on, right? Even if you bring someone in that is maybe the best financial expert that you've ever found in the world, right? But they don't fit the values that everyone else has. It's going to break down kind of what's going on. So I've come into companies before working on their process optimization and making those things more efficient. Yeah. But then you notice that, again, we can always improve some of those things, but then most of the leak on where things are inefficient or where things seem off, because a lot of times companies will say, you know, I really can't put my finger on it, but just something seems off in our organization. And mm -hmm. this is something to look to. I mean, there are different methods of going through your uh, evaluating all of your team and these are one of the most effective it's shown over time, right? I think um, Google and some other groups did a study where the uh, effectiveness of a team and how high performing they were was really a result of their alignment and values versus their alignment and skills or their diversity and skill sets. So um, it is it is very important, but you know, some of that, that comes down, uh, there's two places where you gotta focus on this too, especially as you grow and scale larger, right? One is communication becomes harder. Uh, now it's just not like, Stacy, you and I are running a business, so I just pick up the phone and call you and we talk about it, right? Now you have more employees and you have to figure out how to share that information in the right way and be authentic, right? Um, and also transparency, right? You will continue to win over your employees and your team if you're transparent with them, right? And again, obviously there's not people don't share all of their lives with each other. And I'm not talking about like spilling everything, but you need to be transparent about how the business is going, how they're doing in their roles and the direction it's going. You know, it's okay to share with your employees and when you're growing and scaling and even when you're larger, hey, we're having a hard time right now, right? These are some of the things we're struggling with and having those conversations. So that transparency and communication needs to carry out throughout the scaling process. And again, yeah. that scaling process is a journey, right? It's not like a one-time do-all thing. It will continue yeah. to change and evolve as you grow. Um, and the other component with company culture when you're scaling and growing is the first impression does matter. And I'm not talking about first impression from a customer. I'm talking about first impression when you bring someone in and hire them in your organization, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So much about onboarding is about paperwork, <laughs> right? I need all these forms filled out, right? So we can get you paid and get you enrolled in our health insurance and all these other things. But it's that experience of them coming in and making sure they feel welcomed and valued and connected to the mission that's important. And again, it's probably not something you think of when you're having a startup and growing, but you need yeah. to develop that onboarding blueprint to make sure that those things are getting in place. Uh, and make sure the communication's in place. I've seen a lot of groups start to utilize more and more that buddy system where when you come into an organization, we're going to have you work with someone directly that can help bring you in up to speed, making sure about the values, communicating everything that needs to. Um, and again, like everyone, setting those clear expectations and development opportunities are important too. Right. That's very important. And, and, you know, I, I find, too, is that it, it's also probably good, too, is to have good communication within the the, the development of the 
the department or the small business, you know, when everyone's on one path and when everyone, you know, there's, if someone sets goals and expectations and everybody understands those goals and expectations, because sometimes, you know, I, I think that, you know, people are like, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, but, you know, they're not really setting, you know, they're, they're not really making a unity, you know, it's more, you know, and then people don't feel appreciated or people feel overworked and stressed. And then, it, you know, I don't think things are done, you know, as good as they can be sometimes, you know, what's your intake on that? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. right. That's the, that cascading effect, right? It's where kind of a little uh, ripple in the pond starts to create big waves, right? Those are the exact things you talk about there. Um, again, it could could start with one person, right? And again, it's they feeling appreciated is very important, right? I think more so important these days in the workplace than it's ever been. Um, right, right. You know, I grew up in a time where it was like, hey, you got hired by one company, you stayed with that company, you worked hard, and you got promoted, right? And that's that was kind of the formula for success. But let's be honest, today is much different than that. Um, yes. We all we all know that we're working for for a living, right? We need to afford a house and food and things we enjoy. Um, but feeling valued in the workplace is so undervalued and so kind of back of mind for a lot of companies and people growing up is that startups are in a great place to really take. I don't want to say take advantage. That's not the right word of this, but to really capitalize and find the right people because. A lot of times people now um, are looking for a culture fit first, right? Yeah. Sure, salary benefits are very important too, but a culture fit is right at the top of the list for people on how they, you know, for what jobs they accept or what they're looking at. So that is very important. And again, just like you said, right, things break down when, when everyone's pulling in different directions. And that's why being transparent and consistently communicating is very important. And again, I think a lot of business owners and startups, they struggle with the fact because, hey, you know, my, my goal might be to exit, right? I have a startup. I want to grow it. I want to make it, you know, get a bunch of users and then I want to exit. I want to sell it off to somebody. Um, but your other workers, your team that you've assembled, they don't benefit like you do when you exit. So you need to have, you need to have that compassion and understanding that what your goal is might be different than their goals. And that's where the expectations come in alignment and making sure that those development opportunities are there. Cause you know, if you're gonna exit and your staff's got to find another job, you want to make sure that they're prepped for those jobs because you wanna you've hired a great team, you've invested in them. Um, yeah. you know, you want to make sure they're in a good spot too. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think it, it's important, you know. And a lot of times people, you know, um, if they're if they're thinking about doing something like that, it's probably not a good idea either to to mention the, the type of goals to your employees. You know, if that's something that's set in your head that a goal that you'd like to achieve, you know, it's probably best that you don't share it ahead of time with your employees. So they're going to be a little stressed out. You know? Yeah, but, I, I think there's like there's a happy medium there. Right. Because I wouldn't want to hire someone under the false pretense of like, hey, um, I'm going to hire you and everything needs to be great. And we're going to do this for 30 years, right? When you're like, mm, I'm looking to exit in five. So I think it's okay to communicate that to employees before you hire them, even the hiring process. Because again, when we talk about alignment, right? If they're not aligned in that strategy or what's going right. to happen, then they're going to tangent off and that's going to affect everything else. So there, yeah, you probably don't want to mention the amount you're looking to exit for, but <laughs> right. But mentioning kind of, you know, those things like timeline that will affect them, I think are important. And, um, you know, I've been in roles too, in leadership roles where, again, some people don't look keenly upon you sharing, you know, how the company's doing financially, right? You don't always have to get into numbers, but knowing if you had a good or bad month or if the company's doing well or struggling, the employees, your employees that are vested in what you're doing and are excited about how the company are doing are your most loyal and probably your best employees. So yeah. I, I've always felt that they deserve to hear that information right. um, because they are interested because you're interested in them. It's a reciprocal kind of respect that happens. So, uh, you know, 
th things like that, again, within reason are, I think, very important to share. Yeah, so it's honesty and communication is, is two key factors, it seems, you know, to really grow in a successful business and and really being able to, you know, have everybody with this core, the same core mission, the same values and, you know, and everybody on track with one another. You know, it seems like you really have to have the same type of personality working throughout. It's always good to have your alpha and your betas. You don't want to have a whole group of alphas. In your, <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, but it's good to have people with the same principles, it seems, you know, in your office working with one common goal in mind. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to and you thank you for reminding me about that too. It's the, the values can hold consistent, right. But still having a level of diversity and different views and different personality types are important. Right. Yeah. If I, if I hired 10 of me, I wouldn't get a whole lot done. Right. We'd, we'd get a lot of good process things done and we'd get a, got a little, a lot of thinking done, but there probably wouldn't be as much, you know, creativity and those kind of things that happen. So that balance is still key. But right. again, you can have such diverse viewpoints and diversity in your group, but still have the same values. So I just, that's important to kind of realize going through the process. No, definitely. Definitely. And, you know, what are some of the, you know, you had mentioned early on that um, before our conversation that, you know, you had some success stories about, about scaling, you know, because scaling is such a, a, a tough topic for people because, you know, as we mentioned earlier in our conversation, you know, what are some of the, the success stories that you, you've seen when people start to actually scale their business and they actually start to raise their prices a little bit? Yeah, it's again, it's always a roller coaster, right? It's never, it's never, yay, or we're on the way up, everything's good. So it's all, it's always up and down. Um, you know, one group that I work with, you know, we, we scaled from six to 300 people in 18 months. And that is absurd, right? Would that have been the time frame by choice? No, <laughs> right? But um, it's funny as we were going through that process, one of the key thing that we talked about is one, we had to hire a lot of people in a lot of time with a very specific set of skills, right? So as long as they checked the box on the first set of skills, they were certified in A, B, and C that we needed them to. We focused on, because again, we didn't have time, right? This is not, hey, Scott designed the perfect scaling opportunity. This is like, <laughs> hey, the sales team sold something. You, we need to build it and we need to get there fast, right? So when we talk about the things we talk about, company culture and building things the right way, we had two interview questions, right? One was, what can you tell us about the company, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure that that person did, again, at least five minutes of research on who they've applied for and who they're interviewing with. Right. And then two, it was a question about values and integrity. And could they be coached? And right. those were essentially question one and question two, A, B, and C. And that was it. So we hired 300 people based on two questions. Wow. Ensuring, like we just talked about, that the values were aligned. Mm -hmm. And again, they're not a perfect process, but we were highly successful in bringing in the right people. Obviously, yeah. yes, we took it took more time to train them to exactly what we needed for each role, but that was okay because the values were there. So right. they were eager to learn. And, you know, then we had to deploy those employees within the companies that were our clients. Yeah. And again, if the pro despite the fact that the process was very accelerated, um, the, the, our clients were extremely happy. Our employees yeah. were extremely happy. So it was a win. Despite all the bumps we had along the road, we managed those expectations with the employees. And since we were aligned in values, we were all pulling in the same direction, even when the ship got rocky. So right. um, th those are important. And then again, that leaves you with one less thing to worry about as a business owner when you have to scale other components or invest in other areas because you know Hey, regardless of what happens, I have this group of people in alignment and they're moving in the same direction. And even when one falls a little bit astray, the group will, you know, kind of like a magnet, bring them back in together. So um, that that was one example where, again, much like we talked about in the opening, right? Very exciting. Um, you know, 
buzzing of opportunities, but like high anxiety, um, lots of challenges. But again, you've hired based on values and you set up the process right early so that you can scale that and grow. And again, another thing with startups that we kind of talked about a little bit earlier, and this is a great example of it too, a lot of startups and their founders, all the information's in their head, right? Mm -hmm. How the product is built, how I do this, how I sell things, how the sale turns into actually a product at the door, it's in their head. You yeah. have to document those. I know it's, I know it's boring and I know it seems tedious, but when you bring other people in, they can't see what's in your head yeah. and they may not, what you're saying may not be the best way for them to learn and understand what you're doing. Yeah. So you have to document that so that you have something kind of like a centralized area or procedure that you can follow and everyone can follow, which you can then build and evolve from. So, um, yeah, those are very important. But again, it's like, those are great times working through those problems of scaling and being busy and having too much on the plate. Um, right. But again, yeah, it's great, great times, but anxious times. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what would be some of the things that you'd like to emphasize on? Yeah, I think uh, one thing you, we didn't call it out, but I think this really shows and alludes to having that growth mindset. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be open to things, right? Scaling itself is a journey. You know, yes. it's not a destination, even though you may have a destination at the end. It is uh, planes, trains and automobiles to get there, right? Any way you can. Yeah. So you have to really embrace this growth mindset. And I think part of what becoming a founder does to you too is it, you got to stay curious mm -hmm. right whether that's whatever you're working on or components about your business or what others are doing you really have to be curious and you have to adapt to those new challenges because you know they're going to come right and right. that's why we focus on those core aspects throughout um you know the other thing is is making sure you have partners and relationships in your growth uh everything from against shameless plug having a business consultant or a startup consultant to help you along the way, but even having relationships with banks and investors too, right? Even if you don't need them, you want to cultivate all those kinds of relationships along the way because you might need them at some point. And when you're in your worst time is not the time to build those relationships. So you yeah. want to make sure you have those throughout the process. So th those are the two things that I think are key when going, but again, like the growth mindset and having those partners, um, but again, establishing your authenticity and the values and those that you hire with the values is most important because I've said it before, um, even though I'm a process expert, people are what make the process happen. So you have to treat people like people and everyone you bring into your organization is going to be different in certain ways, but you have to treat them like people, not you know, not a number on the line that's helping you make money or push out your products. So that those are very important. And again, you are a startup. So you probably already know how to be agile in what you do. And right. you need to continue that mindset even as you grow. Well, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, can you tell everybody some of the services that you provide? Yeah, well, my main is helping companies grow and scale. So what I like to do is kind of take them through a lot of the process that we just talked about today, making sure they're strategically aligned, understanding what their vision and goals are and what their values are to make sure that we can start to build that in everything they do. So um, I focus on that in process improvement and even building process and making sure those foundations are in place so companies to grow and scale. Um, and of course, everything along those lines too, right? If it's market research, if it's pricing strategies, if it's working with your, working to or working with your team to help recruit talent and bring people in, you know, how do you relay your authenticity and your values into your branding message? So all of those different components and really anything that has to deal with helping a company grow and scale is where I focus. And honestly, that's where I have the most fun too. It's a great ride to be a part of the journey. And um, I'm always honored to, work with a founder that um, has this fantastic idea and it's just sitting there and it's just waiting to get out into the world because it can help people or make people happy. So those are great things to be a part of. 
Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, where can people find you? Yeah, the best place, uh, probably adamsconsultingfirm.com. You can schedule on there a free consultation. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. You know, happy to chat with anyone uh, if you have your idea and or make an introduction. If there's somebody you know that might need help or just need some advice, uh, please send them uh, my way as well. But that's the best place to go. You can see my services and you can schedule that free consultation right from there. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, uh, Scott. I really enjoyed having you on today. You know, is there anything else that comes to mind before we go that you'd like to share with the audience about growth and scaling? Yeah, um, just make sure you breathe, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? It, it's hard. You get swept up in the process and you get very excited too. And I get very excited just talking about it, but um, yeah. breathe along the way. And then something you got to do is something that I'm poor at is enjoy those little victories too, because you've earned them. And that everyone you surround yourself with wants to celebrate those too. So take time to breathe and take time to celebrate those victories. Oh, that's great advice. Yes, 100%, 100%. Well, Scott, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And everybody, Scott has his podcast. So make sure that you see his podcast. He's on our show. He has his, his own podcast with a bunch of episodes and they're great episodes to listen to. They talk about growth and scaling and how to build your business. And you'll get a lot of great information from it. And, you know, I thank you once again for coming on the show today. And, uh, you know, I love having you on. You're just, you know, you're a whirlwind of information and you always uh, provide such great input. So thank you so much. Oh, the honor is mine. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye.